Well, hello to July. Hey folks, right, a really quick one for July. So I've uh, stupidly left this till last minute again, but this time I've had a very, very hectic and busy July. So I thought I'd do a very quick overview sort of thing. I'm not even sure this camera's level. That's how quick and dirty this is gonna be. Um, I've got my lights on, so uh, I'm gonna be sort of illuminated. Yeah, fantastic. So let's just quickly whip on through because it's been a very busy and hectic month and I just wanna go through everything that we've done. Um, so the biggest thing I think is probably that I've got uh, publishers lined up to have a look at Dragon Ranch this month. Fantastic, but the only problem with that obviously is that I've not done much development on it because I'm worried about doing too much to it to make it, you know, too different to the, the version that I'm going to be pitching to them. So, uh, not a huge amount of work on that. However, I'm super excited about the next game that I'm working on called Ghost Town, which is a sort of drafting card game where um, one of the players is nominated the mayor and they will have action cards rather than building cards. So, every other player will have building cards that they're using to build up the little part of the town. The mayor will have action cards instead that trigger certain actions during the course of the game. So gain money, um, gain development cards, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so basically, yeah, there's a weird kind of drafting mechanic. It should be super fast, super simple, uh, but good fun. Uh, and then like moving populations and things around. More on that in August when I've got a bit more time to prepare for everything. Um, and uh, last bit of news, super exciting for our friend Gino, who is, you know, the other half of Tinkerbot Games. He has signed one of his games up with Alley Cat Games. Fantastic achievement. Well done, mate. Really cool. Really excited for you. Um, cool. Bing, bing. Uh, next thing. So uh, let's move on to non-gaming stuff. So I've been really on a big Zelda kick. So this came about because of the whole uh, like issue with retro gaming at the moment where eShops are closing. So the games that you've downloaded, uh, you can still get hold of apparently, I think. Not 100% sure on that. But the issue is that you can't then go back and buy older games because they're now gone. The eShops for things like the 3DS, the DS, they are older games. Um, older consoles and things, but people are still playing them, people are still using them. I've still got a, a PS Vita, I've still got a 3DS, which I'm playing with right now. Uh, I love my older consoles, you know, they give me those games that are still really, really good. Maybe graphically not the best, and maybe don't have the tightest control systems, but they're still great, and a lot of them are very innovative. So some of the ones I'm playing at the moment are Zelda, the Spirit Tracks, fantastic game that uses all touchscreen stuff, so you can sort of draw routes, draw notes on your little maps, brilliant. Uh, the issue, obviously, is that they're becoming more expensive, which is, their, uh, sorry, they're disappearing the eShops, which then makes the physical cartridges more expensive, so going to sort of secondary markets is getting more and more difficult, and it's the reason why there seems to be this really high um, acceptance of piracy among most people in terms of, like, you know, downloading their ga uh, the games for free from elsewhere without actually paying for them. However, th the, the trade-off with that is that they physically can't get them anywhere else other than paying hundreds of pounds to other people who don't benefit the companies and developers who made the games in the first place. So it's a bit of a grey area. Personally, I'm trying to stick as, uh, with the legal side, uh, hence why I've purchased one of these. Ooh, ah, one of these jobbies. Woo! Um, a little classic. So this will allow me to play some of the earlier Zelda games. I've also got the NES version coming as well, which will allow me to play the very first ones. Uh, so I'll get to play all the Zelda games, which is why I'm on a bit of a Zelda kick, as I said. The reason for that Zelda kick, unfortunately, is because I thought I'd lost a copy of Ocarina of Time. And it's one of my favourite games ever, and I thought... How have I lost this? So I went ahead and you know searched the whole house, checked with all my friends to make sure I hadn't lent it out or something like that. And the only thing I could think of was that maybe I'd traded it in. Turns out I'd never owned a physical copy of it. I downloaded it from the eShop and it was sat on my 3DS already. But by then it was too late. I'd already ordered Ocarina of Time. Um, and then while I was looking at that, loads of like other games popped up. So the old Spirit Tracks, which I know I traded away. Um, Oh, what was the other one? Phantom Hourglass. Some real classic games there for Zelda. Uh, Twilight Princess, those games like that. So I'm now on a bit of a kick to try and recover those before they sort of disappear off into the sunset or become so expensive that I just won't be able to afford them. So yeah, a bit of a Zelda kick as I said, and I'm trying to accumulate them legally. Mm -hmm. uh, cool, cool, cool. Right, what's next? Um, <clears throat> oh, the only books I've been reading. I've not been reading many books this month. The only one that I thought was good well, I read a Dean Koontz that I thought was a bit rubbish. It was about, like, Frankenstein, but Frankenstein's monster uh, called Deucalion. It was a bit rubbish. I don't want to go too far into it. But the other one I read was a zombie anthology. Now, I'm a little bit biased because Gemma, my wife, has a story in this zombie anthology, which I thought was really, really good, um, where there's, like, a vampire lady involved. And really, really cool story. I urge you to go out and buy it. Um, I haven't got a copy. Oh, is that one on the table? No, 
Damn it. Um, I'll try and edit one into the video at some point here. So there'll be me, a picture of me going, ooh, look at this. Um, <clears throat> Really cool stuff, loads of different zombie stories there, really good fun to read, and I've been really enjoying that one. So if you get a chance, look out for that one. It's really, really cool. Uh, and then gaming with uh, the family. It's been a really mixed bag, actually. So um, we taught my son Sumo Gnomes, which is a fantastic game by... Where is it? There he is. Woo. Zombie Gnomes. Here we go, I'll just pull it out for you. Do, 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 do. Uh, Zombie Gnomes by Robbie Munn. Really good fun little game there. It's like a, basically playing sumo gnomes, <laughs> as the name implies. Um, and you're using these dice to sort of do manoeuvres around this board and move your gnomes and try and push the opposing gnome out of the ring. Really good fun. Um, I'm trying to teach my son some of the tactics around it. has been a real pleasure. Uh, we've also been playing Zombie Teens, which is the sequel to Zombie Kids. <laughs> It's a co-op game where you're facing off against zombies, but it's more of a sort of spatial puzzle where you're trying to move boxes from the corners to the middle to try and create, I think it was like a some sort of potion or medicine or something to help. And uh, yeah, essentially it's, uh, you know, super bright, super colourful. It's a legacy style game as well, so, you know, over a course of a few games you might get to open boxes and play with stickers and things like that. Really good fun, a lot deeper than zombie kids has been so i think the kids haven't quite connected with it quite as quickly uh, they prefer like lighter casual games but my son's only five so you know the fact that he can pick up the rules on this is is is, is superb in itself um and my daughter helps him out we're trying to like pick tactics and really good fun uh i would thoroughly recommend zombie kids zombie teens only if you like zombie kids it, it's an extension it's difficult uh, more difficult sorry uh then we also introduced them to mechs versus minions so my wife and i played it ages and ages ago when it first came out uh what this must be about five six years ago when that first came out it was one of those games that was massively overproduced uh, for the cost that you actually paid for it and it created a bit of a furore because uh, you know a lot of people then say well why can't other companies charge this much for a game not understanding the maybe that uh, because league of it was a league of legends game and was produced by i think it's called riot games uh, they had money to spare so they didn't care about overheads and things like that if they sold them at cost that was all they wanted to achieve really was to get the game out really good fun really overproduced the kids absolutely love the intro mission where they got to like slap these little tiny minion things around <laughs> and like program their mechs and then try and figure out the best way to like not swivel around in circles and then stomp off the map or something like that so they really enjoyed that and it's just great for me because i got to reset it and now i'm going to get to play through the whole thing hopefully with the kids um plus they love the gorgeous minis they get to ooh, that was I've got a few of them here, look. So you'll see the little minis in there, look. That's the little guys that you play as. And obviously my daughter went straight away and grabbed the purple one. Uh, my son wanted the one that uh, looked like he was riding a little tiny dinosaur. So I got stuck with little Bomb Man McGee here. <laughs> it just looks like he's cutting around a giant bomb as he's going around the map. But still, really good fun. Really enjoyed that one. And then the last one is... Oh, I have not brought it in. Have I brought it in? Oh, it's over there. Uh, Nightmare Cathedral. So this was an absolutely gorgeous sort of spooky, um, oh, it's really hard to describe, but like biomechanical style artwork with a sort of pessimistic um, end of the worldy kind of vibe to it, where essentially you're in the dreamscape, uh, but there are nightmares going about and you're trying to sort of influence the dreamscape to try and get the most victory points at the end of the game. Really intriguing stuff. It's got like an action selection mechanic where if you select a particular action in a turn, other people might be able to follow what the action that you've done based on whether you're then next to your character when you trigger your action or whether they're far further away. Um, but then the action that you pick will put you into like a what's called a, a the, the actions that you pick are on day spots. Uh, when you finish your turn, you move into the night spot, which is pointed to by this day spot. Uh, and what it means is that you cannot then go into a day spot adjacent to that night spot. So the actions you pick during a turn uh, will reduce the actions you've got available for your next turn. And this weird follow consent descent mis uh, conform or descent mechanic that goes with it for the other players means that they've got something to do during your turn. So it kind of helps with the downtime between each round. And then it sort of connects to a sort of area control ish kind of game where you're trying to complete dreams by fulfilling certain things like building up towers on the board or um, adding followers to the board <coughs> or defeating these shadows, which are these little grubers that are coming around. And all of that it rotates around a cathedral in the middle of the board, which you build up during the first term. And then in the sort of second turn, you end up 
having to uh, interfere with two nightmare creatures that are unleashed by the cathedral once it's built. And these nightmare creatures then devour followers and shadows and throw them onto a devour board. And you're trying to get as many of your minions onto that devour board as possible because you score more points if you've got more of your creatures devoured. Not sure why, but essentially then there's like point salad things where it's like the dreams you've completed, the number of things you've had devoured, the upgrades you've got for all your actions. Yeah, it was really good fun. Um, unfortunately, we played it twice and um, uh, it was good. It was good fun. I don't think I'm jonesing to play it again. I mean, even with the nightmares that are, you know, able to change up the gameplay or the little expansion things in there that sort of add a little extra frisson of flavour, there... I. <laughs> I don't know, there wasn't enough going on in the main game, I felt, just because it says it's area control, but the reason I say ish is that we kind of ignored each other. We played a two-player game, and we could do all of our building and everything, which was quite nice, you know, we're not very sort of aggressive, combat -y kind of players anyway, but myself and my wife were able to kind of just sort of ignore each other, maybe, you know, poke at each other a little bit towards the end game when the nightmares were unleashed, um, and then spent the rest of the game... As I said, just kind of ignoring each other, doing our own little things, hoping that we'd get descents and things, um, and conforms, you know, getting more powerful actions. And yeah, it was fine. It was good. Very pretty, though. I thought it was a really gorgeous production. Um, so, yeah, lots of gaming, lots of other things. Oh, and the last thing to talk about, uh, I'll just grab the camera, see if this is going to work. Probably not. <laughs> so we're going to go main light for a second. <laughs> we're going action cam! Right, main light. Here we go. So... The big thing for me this month has been upgrading this bad boy. So I'm just going to flip my camera over. This guy here. This is a Creality CR5, uh, no, CR10S 3D printer. And the issue I've been having is that the gear in here, which feeds filament through to this thing here, which is the nozzle, um, has broken. So I've been in the process of trying to repair that. Uh, I think I've done it. It required some actual like, unplugging and pulling of things, so I'm a bit concerned that I've possibly broken it. But that was one of the big projects from this month, so hopefully for August I'll be able to do a test print and we'll have some lovely new 3D printed minis and things to play with as well. So yeah, lots of stuff happening, but as I said, not a lot of time. So I'm going to sign off here. Have a good one. Uh, I'll see you again in August. I Fingers crossed I'll plan it a bit better. I'll get it done in like the two weeks before the end of the month rather than the last two days, which is the same as this one. Uh, and we'll also go over our resolutions again in August because that was a big month, uh, July, for completing some of those. So, hooray! All right, cheers, folks, and I'll speak to you again soon.